Hello everyone, my name is Madhuri Gupta, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science, Chhattisgarh Swami Vivekanand Technical University, Bhilai. Welcome back, my fellow learners. In our last lecture, we discussed about breadth first search. Today, we are building on that foundation to explore the captivating world of depth first search, a different approach that takes us on a thrilling journey through uncharted territories. As a quick recap, remember how breadth first search or BFS is like ripples spreading across a pond. It explores level by level, leaving no stone unturned. Well, depth first search or DFS flips the site. Transition to depth first search. Imagine DFS as an interpret adventurer plugging into the unknown depths venturing deeper and deeper along a single path before resurfacing. Let's uncover the essence of the strategy. So here is the key concept of depth first search. First, LIFO principle. Just as a brave explorer would tackle one path until it's fully explored, DFS uses a stack to keep track of nodes following the last in first out principle. Second, traversal order. Instead of moving horizontally like BFS, DFS delves vertically exploring as far as possible along a single branch before retracing its steps. Look at this tree structure with using animation. With DFS, we plug down one path exploring each node's deepest corner before backtracking. So what is backtracking at pathfinding? Backtracking mechanism. DFS employs backtracking allowing it to backtrack and explore other branches when a dead end is reached. Second, path discovery. DFS might not guarantee the shortest path but it's excellent for certain scenario like maze solving or puzzles. While DFS lacks the guarantees of BFS shortest path, it offers unique advantages, its memory efficiency and applicability in scenarios like depth limited search and maze solving showcases its prowess. Real world application. First, game development. DFS plays a crucial role in game character movement and pathfinding, creating immersive gaming experiences. Second, puzzle solving. From solving Rubik's Cube to complex puzzle, DFS breaktacking ability signs. As we immerse ourselves in the realm of artificial intelligence, grasping the nuances of DFS is essential. It lays the groundwork for comprehending more advanced algorithm and their application. So here is the recap and the conclusion. Recap of core concept. Let's recap the fundamental ideal that defines depth first search. Continued exploration. Our journey doesn't end here. Depth first search is just one piece of the puzzle, leading us to even more intricate strategies. Here is the algorithm for depth first search. Depth first search, DFS algorithm. DFS is a recursive algorithm that explores a graph or tree by starting from a source node and systematically exploring as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. It employs a stacked data structure often implemented using recursion to keep track of nodes to be explored. So here are the algorithm steps. Step 1, initialize a stack to store nodes yet to be explored and a set or has table to keep track of visited nodes. Step 2, push the source node onto the stack and mark it as visited. Step 3, while the stack is not empty, A, pop a node from the stack. B, process the node, perform any desired operation on it. C, generate all unvisited neighbor nodes of the current node. D, for each unvisited neighbor, one, mark the neighbor as visited. Second, push the neighbor onto the stack. Step four, 
repeat step 3 A to D until the stack is empty. So, here is the key points DFS explores a single path as deeply as possible before backtracking. The stack keeps track of nodes to be explored following the last in first out LIFO principles. Backtracking occurs when a dead end is reached allowing the algorithm to explore uh, other paths. DFS may not guarantee the shortest path between nodes in an unweighted graph. So, how does DFS work? Step first search is an algorithm for traversing or searching tree or graph data structure. The algorithm start at the root node and explore as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Let us understand the working of DEF first search with the help of the following illustration. Step 1. Stack and visited array are empty initially in the figure. Step 2. Visit 0 and put its address and nodes which are not visited yet into the stack. So, in the figure visit node 0 and put its address and nodes 1, 2, 3 into the stack. Step 3, now node 1 at the top of the stack. So, visit node 1 and pop it from the stack and put all of its address and nodes which are not visited in the stack. Visit node 1. Step 4, now node 2 at the top of the stack. So, visit node 2 and pop it from the stack and put all its adjacent nodes which are not visited that is 3, 4 in the stack. Visit node 2 and put its unvisited adjacent nodes 3 and 4 into the stack. Step 5, now node 4 at the top of the stack. So, visit node 4 and pop it from the stack and put all of its adjacent nodes which are not visited in the stack. Visit node 4. Step 6. Now, node 3 at the top of the stack. So, visit node 3 and pop it from the stack and put all of its adjacent nodes which are not visited in the stack visit node 3. Now, stack become empty which means we have visited all the nodes and our DFS traversal ends. So, here are the advantages. First, memory efficient for large search spaces compared to breadth first search. Suitable for problems with deep search spaces or limited memory resources. Can be used to find paths in a mage to or solve puzzles. So, here are the disadvantages may get stuck in deep branches and fail to find solution in certain cases. Does not necessarily find the shortest path in unweighted graphs. Not well suited for finding the optimal solution in all scenarios. One more example of DFS consider the following graph A, B, C, D, E, F. Starting from node A, a DFS traverse would visit the nodes in the order A, B, D, E, C and F. So, here is the conclusion. Depth first search is a powerful algorithm for exploring and traversing graphs or trees. Its ability to go deep into a single branch before backtracking makes it suitable for various scenarios such as mage solving, pathfinding and exploring complex problem space. So, here is the time and space complexity of depth first search. The time and space complexity of depth first search depends on several factors including the structure of graph or tree being traversed, the branching factor and the depth of search. Uh, Let us break down the complexities. Time complexity of depth first search. The time complexity of DFS is determined by the number of nodes visited and the structure of the graph or tree. Let V be the number of nodes vertices in the graph or tree. Let E be the number of edges in the graph. In the worst case, DFS may visit all nodes and traverse all edges 
resulting in a time complexity of order of v plus e. However, the actual time complexity can vary depending on factors such as the order in which nodes are visited and the presence of cycles. Space complexity of DEFFER search, the space complexity of DFS depends on the maximum number of nodes stored in memory at any given time. This includes the call stack used for recursion and any additional data structure used to track visited nodes. In the worst case, when DFS explores the deepest branch first and backtracks only after reaching the leaf node, the maximum depth of the call stack is equal to the depth of the tree or graph. Therefore, the space complexity is order of h, where h is the maximum depth of the tree or graph. If the graph is a tree, the maximum depth is the height of the tree. For a balanced binary tree, the height is order of log v, but for an unbalanced tree, it can be as high as order of v. In the case of a graph with cycles, DFS may revisit nodes causing the space complexity to increase. In summary, the time complexity of DFS is typically order of V plus E, where V is the number of nodes and E is the number of edges. The space complexity is order of H, where H is the maximum depth of the tree or graph. Keep in mind that these complexities provide a general understanding and can vary based on specific scenarios and graph structures. Breadth first search and depth first search are two fundamental graph traversal algorithms used to explore and search through graphs or tree. They have distinct characteristics and are suited for different scenarios. Here are the key differences between breadth first search and depth first search. First, traversal order. BFS explores the graph label by label visited all nodes at certain depth before moving to the next level. It systematically covers all possible paths of increasing length from the source. DFS on the other hand explore a single branch of the graph as deeply as possible before backtracking. It goes as far as it can along one path before exploring other branches. Second, data structure. BFS uses a queue to keep track of nodes to be explored. It allows first in first out FIFO principle ensuring that nodes at the solvest levels are visited before nodes at deeper level. DFS uses a stack often implemented using recursion to keep track of nodes. It follows the last in first out LIFO principles allowing it to go deep before exploring other paths. Third, completeness. BFS is complete for finite graphs, meaning it will eventually find the goal node if it exists. It explores all nodes at a certain depth before moving deeper. DFS is not necessarily complete. It can stuck in infinite loops if cycle exists in the graph or if the search depth is not bounded. Fourth, shortest path. DFS guarantees finding the shortest path between the source node and any reachable node in an unweighted graph. DFS does not guarantee the shortest path and may not find the optimal solution in terms of path length. Fifth, memory uses. BFS typically require more memory than DFS. It needs to store all nodes at the current level in the queue. Depth first search uses less memory as it explores one path deeply before backtracking. Applications BFS is commonly used for tasks that require finding the shortest path like navigation system and maze solving. DFS is suitable for tasks that require exhaustively searching through possibilities such as puzzle, games and depth limited searches. In summary, BFS is ideal for scenario where the shortest path is crucial, where DFS is better suited for situation where exhaustively exploring possibilities is required or where memory is limited. 
the choice between BFS and DFS depends on the specific problem and its requirement. Certainly, here is the table summarizing the key differences between breadth first search and depth first search. Depth first search is a graph traversal algorithm that explores a graph or tree by diving deep into a single branch before backtracking. Here is a concise summary of DFS. Here is the definition, depth first search is an uninformed graph traversal algorithm that explores a graph or tree by systematically exploring a single path as far as possible before backtracking. So, here is the key characteristic LIFO principle. DFS uses a stack data structure to keep track of nodes to be explored following the last in first out LIFO principles. Traversal order in explore it explores one branch deeply before moving to the other branches allowing to allowing it to reach the maximum depth of a path before backtracking. Backtracking when a dead end is reached DFS backtracks to the last node with unexplored neighbors and continue exploring. Completeness DFS is not necessarily complete as it can get stuck in infinite loops if cycle exists in the graph or if the search depth is not bounded. So, advantages efficient memory uses DFS uses less memory compared to breadth first search making it suitable for scenario with limited memory resources. Suitable for depth limited search DFS can be easily adopted for depth limited search exploring paths up to a certain depth. Exhaustive exploration depth first search is well suited for task that require exhaustively searching through possibilities such as puzzles and games. Disadvantages Lack of shortest path guarantees DFS may not find the shortest path between nodes in an unweighted graph. Second, incomplete for infinite search spaces. In graph with cycles DFS might not guarantees completion if proper precaution are not taken. Potential for stuck in branches. DFS may get stuck exploring deep branches without exploring other paths if not properly managed. So, here are the applications. Puzzle solving DFS is commonly used for solving puzzles such as Mage, Rubik's Cube and Sudoku. Game development DFS plays a crucial role in game character movement, pathfinding and exploring game states. Depth limited search DFS can be applied to search spaces where exploring all possibilities is not feasible. Depth first search is a fundamental algorithm used in artificial intelligence and computer science for traversing and searching through data structures like graphs and trees. It is often used in various AI applications including pathfinding, solving puzzles and exploring state spaces in search problems. Here is an overview of how DFS works in AI. The basic idea, DFS explores a graph or tree by starting at the root node or any arbitrary node and exploring as far as possible along each branch before backtracking. Next is stack data structure. DFS is typically implemented using a stack data structure or recursion to keep track of nodes to be visited. Next we have pseudocode. How we can write this algorithm in a pseudocode by using python. So, we have to define function DFS node. If node is goal then return node that means goal found if node is visited return node that means node already visited backtrack mark node as visited for each neighbor of node result is equal to dfs neighbor if result is not none return result that means goal found in one of the branches return node that means goal not found in this branch. This is the pseudo code how we can work on DFS. So, uses in AI. First 
path finding dfs can be used to find a path from a start state to a goal node in a graph such as in maze solving or route finding problem state space search in ai planning and problem solving dfs can explore the state space of a problem to find a solution by trying different actions and states game playing dfs is used in games like chess and tic tac toe to search through possible move sequences and find the best moves next is constraint satisfaction problem in constraint satisfaction problem dfs can be employed to search for a valid assignment of values to variables while satisfying constraints next is completeness and efficiency dfs is not guaranteed to find the shortest path or optimal solution and it can get stuck in infinite loops in certain cases it is a complete search algorithm when applied to finite state space but may not terminate for infinite state space to mitigate some of the limitations techniques like depth limiting and iterative depending depth for search can be used variants there are variants of dfs including bidirectional dfs used for searching from both the start and goal simultaneously recursive and iterative depending dfs next is complexity the time and space complexity of dfs is order of v plus e where v is the number of vertices and e is the number of edges in the graph in summary depth first search is a fundamental search algorithm used in ai and computer science for exploring and searching through graphs and trees while it has its limitation it is valuable for various ai application especially when you need to explore a large state space or find path in graphs depth first search is a useful algorithm for various application but but it has several limitations so limitations of depth first search first completeness for infinite graphs dfs is not complete when applied to graphs with infinite branches or loop it can get stuck in an infinite loop and may not find a solution even if one exist completeness for unbounded depth infinite graph infinite graphs if the depth of search tree is unbounded dfs may not complete within a reasonable amount of time or memory it can exhaust the summaries it can exhaust the system's stack memory in recursive implementation third lack of optimality dfs does not guarantee that it will find the shortest path or the optimal solution it might find a solution faster than other algorithm but that solution may not be the best one in terms of a certain criteria that means shortest path lowest cost fourth one is vulnerable to cycles if the graphs has cycles dfs can enter an infinite loop unless it keeps track of visited nodes however even with cycle detection dfs may not necessarily find all solution in cyclic graph next is memory uses in some cases especially when dealing with deep graphs or tree dfs can get dfs can consume a significant amount of memory due to the need to maintain a stack of nodes to backtrack six one is bias towards one branch dfs explores one branch as deeply as possible before backtracking which can lead to sub optimal solutions if the goal is closer to a different branch this bias can make dfs less efficient in certain scenarios next is 
no learning or heuristic information. DFS does not incorporate any learning or heuristic information, making it less suitable for informed search in AI application compared to algorithms like A star or greedy best for search. Eighth one is bidirectional search challenge. In bidirectional search where DFS is used to search from both the start and goal simultaneously, it can be challenging to ensure that both shortest meet efficiently. It can be challenging to ensure that both searches meet efficiently. To address some of these limitations, variations of DFS such as iterative depending DFS can be employed. Additionally, in some application combining DFS with heuristic information or using it as a part of large search strategy can help mitigate its drawbacks while leveraging its strengths. Conclusion Depth first search is a powerful algorithm that excels in exhaustively exploring possibilities within a search space. Its ability to go deep into a single branch before backtracking may make it suitable for a specific scenario, but careful consideration is needed to address its limitations such as the lack of shortest path guarantees and the potential for getting stuck in the branches. So, in the next lecture, we will explore the concept of heuristic search. So, what is heuristic search? A heuristic search is a technique to solve a problem faster than classic methods or to find an approximate solution when classic methods cannot. This is a kind of shortcut as we often tread one of the optimality, completeness, accuracy or precision for speed. A heuristic or a heuristic function takes a look at search algorithms. At each branching step, it evaluates the available information and makes a decision on which branch to follow. It does so by tracking alternatives. The heuristic is any device that is often effective but will not guarantee work in every case. So, why do we need heuristic? One reason is to produce in a reasonable amount of time a solution that is good enough for the problem in question. It does not have to be the best an approximate solution will do since this is the fast enough. Most problem are exponential. Heuristic search let us reduce this to a rather polynomial man number. We use this in AI because we can put it to use in situation where we cannot find known algorithms. We can say heuristic techniques are weak methods because they are vulnerable to explorations. Heuristic search techniques in artificial intelligence, briefly we can taxonomize such technique of heuristic into two categories. Heuristic search, heuristic search technique in artificial intelligence, A direct heuristic search techniques in AI, other names for this are blind search, uninformed search and blind search and blind control strategies. They are not always possible since they demand much time or memory. They search the entire state space for a solution and use an arbitrary ordering of operations. Examples of these are breadth first search and depth first search. B weak heuristic search techniques in AI. Other names for this are informed search, heuristic search and heuristic control strategy these are effective if applied correctly to the right types of tasks and usually deemed domain specific information. We need this extra information to compute preferences among child nodes to explore and expand. Each node has a heuristic function associated with it. Examples are best first search and A star. Before we move on, to describe certain techniques, let us first take a look at the ones we generally observe. Below we name a few. Best first search, A star, bidirectional search, taboo search, beam search, simulated annealing, 
हिल क्लाइंबिंग कंस्टेंट सेटिस्फेक्शन प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट हिल क्लाइंबिंग इन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस दिस इज अरिस्टिक फॉर ऑप्टिमाइजिंग प्रॉब्लम मैथमेटिकली वी नीड टू चूज वैल्यूज फ्रॉम द इनपुट टू मैक्सिमाइज और मिनिमाइज अ रियल फंक्शन इट इज ओके इफ द सोल्यूशन इज एंड द गोल ऑप्टिमल मैक्सिमम हिरिस्टिक सर्च टेक्निक हिल क्लाइंबिंग वन सच एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हिल क्लाइंबिंग विल बी वाइडली डिस्कस्ड ट्रेवलिंग सेल्समैन प्रॉब्लम वन वेयर वी मस्ट मिनिमाइज द डिस्टेंस ही ट्रेवल्स ए Feature of hill climbing in artificial intelligence. Let's discuss some of the feature of the algorithm that is hill climbing. It is a variant of the generate and test algorithm. It makes use of the greedy approach. This means it keeps generating possible solution until it finds the expected solutions and moves. only in the direction which optimize the cost function for it so we have discussed all the point of today's class we have discussed about def first search we also have the recap of breadth first search we also explain the difference between breadth first search and def first search and also we have discussed about our next lecture so thank you for watching and we will see you in the next lecture mm -hmm.